Honorable Member of Parliament, Professor M. S. Swaminathan Ji, Dr. Hari Gautam, Dr. Kirti Singh, Professor P. I. Peter, Dr. K. V. Peter, distinguished scientists and participants, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure this morning to be in the company of such a distinguished galaxy of scientists, researchers, experts from the medical field, from across the country and abroad in the first World Noni Congress 2010, organized by World Noni Research Foundation. The theme of this symposium, Noni for Global Wellness, is extremely relevant in today's context. And I feel that the objective of such a seminar should be to encourage and explore the use of herbal drugs and food supplements for general wellness, where Noni with its acclaimed abilities of having powerful antioxidant properties can also make a useful contribution towards the well-being of humanity. Noni plant is found in Southeast Asia, India, Australia, and countries of the Pacific region, and now has a pan-tropical distribution. Let me digress for about two minutes to introduce my Andaman and Nicobar Islands, which Professor Swaminathanji just mentioned a few minutes ago. Our islands lie about 1,200 kilometers in the Bay of Bengal, away from the mainland, from Chennai, as also from Kolkata. We are very close to our countries on our east, north, and southeast. My northernmost island uh, is about 40 kilometers from the Coco Island of Myanmar. The southernmost island is about 125 kilometers from an Indonesian island. So we are in close proximity to Myanmar, Thailand, Malaysia, and Indonesia. We are about 8,000 square kilometers. I say this because they are fairly big islands in the sense to give you a comparative figure, we are almost 30 times the size of Maldives, 20 times the size of Singapore. So they are very big islands. And I must tell you something unique about our islands is that we are very proud. Normally it is referred to as Kala Pani, but let me tell you, this is the most sacred Pani of our country. The contribution made during the freedom struggle is unparalleled by any standards if I compare it as far as the overall freedom struggle of our country is concerned. I say this as a soldier with a lot of conviction. The amount of sacrifices made by our people who were there in the cellular jail, which is almost a sacred temple as far as we are concerned, is absolutely enormous. And most of them are unsung heroes. But fortunately today, we have recognized them and we do understand the contribution made by them for the freedom of our country. Also, I would like to mention to you that we are proud to have with us the six most primitive tribes on this planet. We live in total harmony and peace with our primitive tribes. They teach us a lot of things, as just Professor Swaminathan mentioned. We learn from them as they learn from the modern civilization. We are also very proud that all of us, whichever part of the country they have come and settled down in our islands, we all have a common language of Hindustani. We speak to each other, we communicate to each other in a single language. We live most peacefully as far as the religion is concerned, the ethnicity is concerned. And I can tell you, our islands are a role model for our country as far as the question of unity in diversity is concerned. <laughs> Coming back to our Noni, India, as we all know, has been the home and a pioneer in natural plant-based medicines, and our rich biodiversity has been our age-old strength. We have a rich heritage with Ayurveda, where many medicinal plants have been used over the centuries, as health tonics and medicines for various ailments. Noni Biotech is making a substantial contribution in the propagation of various applications of Noni as a food supplement through its health enhancement properties 
and its complementary utility for optimal effectiveness of conventional medicines. They have launched many products using the properties of Noni and have also made a concerted drive towards research in this field. Noni is also a native plant of Andaman and Nicobar Islands and it has been used as traditional medicines by the primitive tribes, particularly the Nicobaris, for over hundreds of years. The medicinal use and knowledge of this plant has been passed on from one generation to the other by these primitive tribes who have used almost all parts of this plant for treating different ailments. Interestingly, I must mention here that this was the only plant which could withstand the onslaught of the tsunami waves during December 2004. And it continued to flower even in the areas submerged with brackish seawater. These days, our farmers have taken on to plantation of noni in an organized manner with the help of Professor Peter and the Central Agricultural Research Institute in our islands through a contract where Noni Biotech Company will buy all the produce to assure the farmers of a regular market and financial remuneration. In this regard, the Central Agriculture Institute Port Blair has also done a pioneering work on the documentation of traditional knowledge regarding the properties of Noni and organized training for the farmers to ensure proper crop cultivation, enhanced production, post-harvest processing and upkeep of the noni plantations. However, I would urge your collective concern in ensuring fair remuneration and continuity in this new initiative for my farmers as they begin switching over to noni farming from the traditional crops because of the very limited land available for agriculture. Although the land holdings have shrunk all over the country due to the rise in population, and diversion of agricultural land for other purposes, yet the situation is quite acute in the islands as over 90%, I say this again, as over 90% of our land is under forest cover and almost 3% land is not usable because of mangroves and low-lying areas near the shores. Therefore, I too would simultaneously like to assure my farmers of social and financial security by giving them alternatives should the noni plantations not do so well in the coming years. Therefore, I'm always keen that my fa farmer's security aspect is well looked after. Today, we have the privilege of having in our midst one of the most distinguished agricultural scientists of the world, Professor Swami Nathanji, who is a household name in our country and is the indis indisputable father of the Green Revolution of not only in India, but many other countries too. He has performed nothing short of a miracle to overcome the acute shortages in the food sector and made India a self-sufficient country in food. I feel such great and unprecedented agricultural revolutions need to be continuously and rigorously followed up with proper perspective planning and management of resources. A lot of infrastructural changes will still face us such as planning of proper storage facilities at various echelons at the district, state and the national level requisite public distribution system to ensure that the food reaches the needy population, the, uh, uh, the benefits of all this harvest go to the farmers, the middlemen, government agencies and the poor people, incentives to farmers to sustain this intensive cultivation on a long-term basis, and finally the ecological management of the land under cultivation, which would mean proper use of fertilizers, water resources, and introduction of appropriate crop varieties. I have only enumerated some of the challenges facing the post-green revolution phase and therefore my aim is to put forth the urgent need to have a robust, futuristic and holistic approach towards any such changes in the, agri in the agricultural system. I would like to take into consideration all the issues that I have just mentioned so that even the farmers of my islands who have very small holdings are not confronted with the problems faced by the farmers of the more progressive states who were the initial pioneers of the Green Revolution. Incidentally, I too happen to belong to the same region where the farmers took on to this intensive cultivation of wheat and rice during the Green Revolution era, but are now struggling with their profession as agriculturists. 
a reflection perhaps on the need to build on the pioneering work of the Green Revolution. All these aspects are now being addressed on priority by our government and I am absolutely confident that with one of our tallest agricultural scientists, Professor Swaminathan ji being there at the helm, we shall overcome most of them by carrying out mid-course corrections. There is normally some apprehension amongst the people at large for the use of herbal medicines or for that matter the alternate medical therapy such as Ayurveda, Yunani, homeopathy and other natural medication for lack of proper scientific evaluation and validation. I am confident that the distinguished agricultural scientists, researchers and experts from the medical field who have assembled here this morning will collectively apply their minds to carry out the necessary research for bringing about a proper scientific evaluation, validation and authentic medical certification for the use of noni plant which has a wide range of therapeutic potentials as a food supplement and also for its medicinal use. I take this opportunity to congratulate all the Lifetime Achievement Awards given this morning to all our great scientists who have made a monumental contribution in the field of noni science. I would like to compliment Dr. Kirti Singh, Professor Peter for organizing such a seminars and I wish them all success in their mission of developing a healthy India and the world through the use of noni. Thank you. Jai Hind. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Divine.